Hey everybody and welcome to this episode of Unboxing Wednesdays. It is episode 228 and it's for comics coming into stores Wednesday, March 11th, 2015. Ricky, what's new in comic news this week? Oh man, that Daredevil trailer today slash yesterday. It was, it was yesterday. Oh. It was yesterday. Man. Tuesday. You know what really got me excited about that? Uh, the Kingpin. I'm not Kingpin a big fan. is great. I'm not a big fan of Kingpin in the comics just because he's like so big. And right. You're like, what man is this big? But then in the in the trailer, he's like normal size. He made it real. <laughs> yeah. He made him real. Yeah. Vincent D'Onofrio is an awesome, yeah. awesome actor. And he looks like a grown baby. It's so good. <laughs> uh, so uh, you know, are, are we going to see the full Daredevil suit? Do you think in this? Hopefully not. You, th you hope it stays. Yeah, like what I like this costume. The, what yeah. he's always wearing that. It's much more real. Much yeah. more like street level. Yeah, you know, exactly. New York City. And, like, his costume would look weird, I think. It's like the Flash and the Flash show. Right. Like, I don't know. His costume's, like, so plasticky, and you're, like, mm. weak. Some shout-outs in the trailer to uh, Iron Man and Thor. Did, you, did yeah. you notice those? Yeah. Tying the whole universe together. DC, take notes. And That's how it's done. I saw a, uh, a thing. I don't know. I forgot where I saw it, but it, it was showing that... Um, there was like a, a van from the Rand Down Corporation. Down by the river? No. Oh. It was from the Rand Corporation, which is a nod to Iron Fist. Oh, cool. Which is coming out. Which is coming well. soon from Netflix. So. Yeah. Hopefully it's kind of like the Iron Fist they have going on right now. So Exciting good. times. Well, a special announcement. Stadium Comics will be closed on April 10th <laughs> as we all sit in front of our TVs and just binge watch the hell out of Daredevil. No, no. We'll be open. But, like, we'll make Ricky work or something yeah, like that. I'll be watching it. You'll be watching it here in the store? Yeah. It's misuse of our internet, my friend. <laughs> uh, what else? Oh, Valiant. Valiant is going to be the next big blockbuster uh, publisher to bring their stories to the big screen. And, and you know, love Valiant or hate them, you got to respect them for getting, uh, you know, reportedly over $100 million to yeah. bring their ideas to the screen. Hopefully it's all full of 90s stuff. You have, like, Oingo Boingo doing the uh, soundtrack. And you got, uh, what is it? <laughs> David Hyde Pierce, he could be in it. Niles? Yeah. Niles from Frasier? I'd watch that. <laughs> watch that all day long. Maybe like Ninjack. Nice. Yeah. Uh, well, you know, Va Valiant has been really putting out uh, some great stuff, I think, in the last few years. Uh, and it hasn't really taken off as much as they probably would have hoped it has. But I think this announcement of the Valiant movie universe is going to kind of... Uh, work in their favor as far as comic sales go for Valiant. So it'll be interesting to see how that mm -hmm. uh, translates over the next little bit. They should do a movie on Dead Drop by Adam Gorham. I think they should too. <laughs> I think they should. Enough chatter about movies and television, Ricky. Let's have a look at all the source material for all that fun stuff. And let's open up some boxes. While Ricky's putting all those comics away, I just want to remind everybody about Comic Boxer. Yes, head over to comicboxer.com to sign up for your monthly package. Little care package from us filled with, uh, you know, anywhere from five to seven of the hottest comics from the month before. So these could be um, number one issues, first appearances, variant covers, exclusives. We've had signed editions go into these Comic Boxer thingies. Uh, it is awesome. Sometime early next week you'll actually be able to get a look at what was in February's box. We're uh, going to be filming a little video that shows you all of that. And uh, time is running out to get in on March's box. There are a lot of great comics going into that. I can tell you that from first-hand experience. Uh, so please check out comicboxer.com uh, if you're interested in that. Also, our website store.stadiumcomics.com right now has uh, Secret Wars uh, collector's packs up on there, action figure collector's packs, uh, Deadpool's Secret Secret War collector's packs, and a bunch of other things. Go over to store.stadiumcomics.com to check that out. All right, moving on to the collectibles. We have a lot to show you today, uh, so let's get started with t-shirts. This is a Flash t-shirt based on the television show. Got some My Little Pony vinyl toys from Funko. This is Rarity and Daring Doe Dazzle. And we also have this Discord figure. Kind of looks like Trogdor. Here is a Marvel Select Cable action figure. Lots of pouches. Just as it, he was intended to always have. From the X-Files, Mulder and Scully bobbleheads. 
We've got these new DC Collectibles toys. They're called Q-Pops. And uh, this is a Batman one. And it looks really cool. It, it comes with a dry erase marker so you can write your own word balloon for your Q-Pop figure. Very cool. That's kind of what they look like there. And we also have a Catwoman version. Some Funko Pop figures to show you. Uh, from Disney we have Lilo and Stitch. Got a restock on the Raphael figure. We also have Cthulhu. Charlie from Supernatural. Zoe from Firefly. Alright, we got some anime related pops today. From Black Butler we have The Undertaker. Sebastian. Grell. From Attack on Titan we have Mikasa Ackerman and Aaron Jagger. Then we also have the Titan form of Aaron. Got a Nurse Harley Quinn figure from the Arkham uh, Asylum series of games. Also from Lilo and Stitch we have Scrump, Thrall from World of Warcraft. Uh, I'm taking home a set of these with me. It's Jack Burton and Lo Pan from Big Trouble in Little China. Uh, also out today are the uh, three Furies. We have Rain, Thunder and Lightning uh, as well as Gracie Law. Got a Domo Ghostbuster, a Domo Slimer and Stay Domo, the Marshmallow Domo. Speaking of the Ghostbusters Stay Puff Marshmallow Man, here is the toasted version of Stay Puff. We also have the toasted Stay Puff Marshmallow Man in bank form. We also got uh, these blind box DC Superheroes vinyl figures. Uh, really cool. These, uh, what's the rare one here? Does it say? Maybe White Lantern Batman. Oh, there's a metallic Harley Quinn as well. Very cool. We also have these DC, uh, they're called figural key rings. I prefer to call them action figure keychains. But uh, here they are. There's all kinds of people you can get, and there are uh, some rare ones as well. Okay, moving on to the collected editions, we have The Humans, Volume 1. This is, uh, I think, Planet of the Apes meets Sons of Anarchy. That pretty much sums up this book right here. Astro City Victory. Tiny Titans, Return to the Treehouse, Batman Beyond, Volume 2.0, Volume 2, Axis, Deadpool, and new and soft cover today, Justice League, Volume 5. Alright, now uh, we've got this special $1 edition of iZombie that's out today. Of course, iZombie is going to be a television series on the CW starting uh, just in about a week's time, March 17th, actually less than a week, next Tuesday. So that's six days from now. So uh, be sure to check that out. We've got a second printing of Marceline Gone Adrift number one. And we've got uh, new on shelves today, Marceline Gone Adrift issue three. Astro City number 21. Postal number two. From Dynamite, we have Shaft issue four. Uh, uh, from IDW, we have Ragnarok number four. Unity number 16 from Valiant. Jim Butcher's Dresden Files Downtown issue number two. East of West number 18. From the mind of Alish Cott, we have the Surface issue number one. Uh, awesome, awesome design on the covers. Here's the first one, the second, and the third. This book really does look beautiful inside and out, and I'm definitely going to give it a read. Something I've been waiting my whole life for is the return of Bill and Ted from the Excellent Adventure and Bogus Journey, in that order. Uh, something new from, from that, that duo, that wonderful duo from my youth and now we have it in comic book form it's Bill and Ted's most triumphant return issue number one from Boom Studios this takes place uh, directly after the events of the San Dimas Battle of the Bands in 1991 uh, that was uh, of course at the end of the uh, bogus journey movie and that's where Wild Stallions taught us all that God gave rock and roll to us so Looking forward to reading this book. And here is the variant cover from Boom, celebrating Boom's 10th anniversary. Uh, from Image Comics, we have another new title today. It's Southern Cross, Issue 1. This is by Becky Cloonan and fellow Canadian Andy Belanger. All right, new from Oni Press today. This is one I'm excited about uh, because of who's behind it and because of the price. It's Hellbreak, Issue Number 1, uh, written by Cullen Bunn, who is an awesome writer. Uh, and it is only one dollar for the first issue. How amazing is that? Brian Chirillo is on the art and uh, Dave Stewart's on the colors. The book looks great uh, and there's a bunch of covers for it. So let me show you those. Here's the Dave Johnson variant, the Cliff Chang variant, and the Jenny Friesen variant. Uh, Jenny, of course, from Revival fame. Spawn Resurrection. This is a one-shot and it details 
the return of Al Simmons in the role of Spawn. Here's The Walking Dead, issue 138. And new today from Valiant, and like I was saying at the beginning, it'll be interesting to see whether or not the, the movie news uh, that Valiant announced will have any effect on the sales of their comics. This is a great, uh, I guess, litmus test for that. It is Ninjak issue number one. Um, there's multiple covers for this. Here's the first one. Cover B. This is cover A. Cover C. It's the Ninjak blank cover. Here's the variant for the book. And here's another, I guess, design variant. It says, once you see gold, you're already dead. Moving on to DC Comics, we've got a second printing of the Multiversity Guidebook. This is your guide to the Multiversity, hence the guidebook. It's also got this uh, map of the multiverse in here, as well as rundowns of all the significant Earths and who you can find on that uh, planet. Arrow Season 2.5, number 6, for all the Diggle fans out there. Got a second printing of Superman, issue number 38. It's also a wrap cover. Injustice Gods Among Us Year 3, issue 11. Smallville Continuity, number 4. Justice League United, number 10. This is the regular cover. And this is the DC movie poster variant paying tribute to Mars Attacks. Green Lantern Corps, number 40. Here's the Green Lantern Corps, number 40 movie variant. Superman Batman, issue 32. Earth 2, World's End, number 23. Action Comics 40, it's a Bizarro issue. Here's the variant cover by Jay Lee. Probably the most awesome of the movie variant covers, the Action Comics Bill and Ted Excellent Adventure tribute. Batman Eternal number 49, Constantine number 23, Suicide Squad number 8, Future's End number 45, Mortal Kombat X issue number 4, Batman Detective Comics Endgame issue number 1. This is the first of the Endgame one-shots that you'll see amongst the Bat Family books taking place in the month of March. And then we have Batman Arkham Knight issue number one. This is the official prequel to the next Batman game. Uh, ex expecting big things for this book. This is the regular cover. And then we have this awesome variant. Okay, moving on to Marvel. We've got Thor issue number two. This is a second printing. Silver Surfer number 10. New Avengers number 31. Here's the New Avengers 31 variant. Superior Iron Man number six. Captain Marvel number 13. Guardians Team Up number 2, All New X-Men 37, Miles Morales The Ultimate Spider-Man number 11, Deadpool number 43, only two issues until Deadpool dies, again, Spider-Man 2099 number 10, Ant-Man issue 3, Wolverines number 10, Nova Annual number 1, Spider-Man and the X-Men number 4, Miss Marvel 13, here's the variant cover by Noelle Stevenson, here's the Deadpool variant, Fantastic Four number 644, we are nearing the end of this series uh, and a lot is going on and a lot of speculation as to what this book means as far as Secret Wars goes and uh, could all be kind of leading towards that. This is the regular cover. Here is the variant featuring Sue Storm and here is the other variant. Thor issue number six. Will this be the issue where we find out who Thor is? Please, Marvel, tell us. Who is Thor? Here is the Stephanie Hans variant. Here's the variant cover. We've got Howard the Duck number one, a new release today from Marvel. Uh, this is by Chip Zdarsky of Sex Criminals fame and Joe Quinones. This is the regular cover. Then we've got the blank cover. Then we've got the evolution cover. This is, uh, this is much like the uh, Ant-Man shrinking variant that, was, uh, that came out last month, or two months ago, sorry. All kinds of different uh, variations of the evolution of Howard the Duck. Uh, and this one here, we have a baby Howard the Duck. And uh, the number is low on it. It's 616. Hey, 616, Marvel Universe. Wow. Maybe this cover's worth like a thousand bucks. Probably not. But each cover is individually numbered once again, so that's really cool and uh, very unique. And uh, we commend Marvel for doing this again. Here's the Scotty Young Howard the Duck cover. We got a bunch of other variant covers. Here's one, here's another, and another. I believe this one's by Chip Zdarsky. This one's by Paul Pope. Then we have Star Wars issue three, the Obi-Wan Kenobi action figure variant, and the Darth Vader variant for Star Wars number three. Spider-Gwen issue number two, the awesome Spider-Gwen variant cover. Amazing Spider-Man issue number 16. And then finally today we have the Amazing Spider-Man special, one shot. 
Uh, cover by our good friend Jamal Campbell uh, from the From a Hat Artist Collective. We had Jamal in our store uh, a couple months back uh, uh, for the release of Spider-Verse Team-Up issue number three, which he did the cover for as well. Um, and he was signing copies of that. And we even included one of his signed copies in January's comic box for shipment. So that was really cool. Um, this story is going to be continued in Inhuman Special Number 1, which comes out in April. And Jamal is also doing the cover for that book. Alright guys, it's prize time. But before we get to the prizes, haircut update. It's coming in pretty good, man. It's coming in pretty good. <laughs> it's not, uh, when I look at you like this, it's not very visible. But then when I go like this, it's like, ah, oh, surgery. That's okay. But last week we were asking you guys, uh, what other Star Wars character would you like to see have a comic? And we got a ton of answers, so I was like super happy about that. Uh, I'm only going to read a couple, I'm sorry, but a lot of people wanted Yoda, which I thought was pretty smart. I'd like to see a young Yoda. Would he be like smaller? Would he be bigger? Who knows? But uh, Ken Ives said, I'd like to see the Cantina Band get their own comic book. They would tour the galaxy promoting their latest album. I think that'd be awesome. Like, what kind of drugs and sex do they get into, right? That crazy Cantina Band. Mega A2DG said, uh, I'd like to see a Chewbacca origin one-shot, telling us his origins all the way back to when he met Han Solo. That's like 200 years of story right there. Well, uh, Mr. Mega A2DG... I don't know if they could do 200 years in a one shot. I mean, that's that's crazy. But maybe, who knows. Uh, Christian Sage said Jar Jar should get his own book. People would buy the book and burn it. But inside is the best story of Jar Jar Binks. I agree, man. I actually didn't mind Jar Jar Binks. I mean, he was really annoying and kind of racist. But that's okay. I mean, you know, he, he really helped out the Jedis. You know, he's a good guy in, the, in, in, in his heart. But the winner goes to Exurb14. Exurb14 has an X in it. Uh, they said, I would make a series of the company that manufactures the light blades, uh, lightsaber. Uh, if, if it's the same for the Jedi as it is the Sith, uh, something to do about conspiracies and all of that. That would be fantastic, man. That. You know, have they ever talked about that in the Star Wars universe? I have no idea. I have no, we'll have to ask our Star Wars expert, because he'll probably know if they talked about a lightsaber manufacturer, but that is a great idea. I'd watch a whole movie about that, because, I mean, this company makes these, these things that are, are used both by evil people and good people. Crazy. So, um, congratulations, Exurbs14. Head on over to stadiumcomics.com slash prizes to find out how to get your information to us. This week we're giving out a super exciting book, Batman Arkham Knight. Oh man, I know y'all are excited for this. I'm excited. It's a really thick book. This is like, you really smell the Batman sweat. Um, so in, in the game, you could drive around in the Batmobile, um, running over people, apparently not killing them. I don't know how that works, but and shooting bullets, too. The Batmobile is the craziest thing in the world. Anyways, you're driving around, uh, and you're doing all that. So, it's an interesting piece of gameplay. So, if you were a game designer on Arkham Knight, what kind of interesting gameplay would you put in uh, the new Batman game? Personally, I'd put in some kind of cooking mama simulator kind of thing, where, you know, you're Batman, you're really hungry, and you have to go and, like, eat something. You have to, like you know, help Alfred in the kitchen, I think that'd be good. It'd be like Snake Eater. You guys ever play Snake Eater? That game was amazing, and he ate food in that game. So, I want food in this game. Anyways, best answer, we'll win a copy of Arkham Knight. Alright everybody, that is it for this week. Thank you once again for watching. Before we go today though, I do uh, have a special treat for everybody. We have a special correspondent here. <laughs> to speak to you about some Star Wars related events that are tied into sporting events going on in the local area. It sounds insane, I know, but our friend Alan is here to clear everything up for everybody and give the info that you all need. Alan? I, sh I should mention, Alan, say hello to everybody there. Hello. I should mention that Alan is also our uh, future G.I. Joe correspondent, <laughs> our future uh, Journey, the rock band consultant, and our future 
Huey Lewis in the news correspondent for any news that we have relating to Star Wars G.I. Joe or those bands from uh, the 70s and 80s that you kids out there probably don't even know anything about. Uh, but anyway, Alan, we have some information to share with everybody. On the week of March 19th, uh, during the week of the Toronto Comic Con, mm -hmm. the Toronto Marlies, they're having a special Star Wars night at the Rico Stadium. Is it the, same, is it the same weekend? Yes. Oh, cool. So that's, uh, yeah, the Comic Con runs the 20th to the 22nd. Right. And when is the Star Wars game? The Star Wars game is that Friday at 7 o'clock at the Rico Stadium. All right, so everybody abandon the Toronto Comic Con on Friday. <laughs> but, but not my table. Oh, but not, oh. <laughs> oh, damn, we're cutting into Ricky's profits here. Okay, so that's at 7 p.m. Yes, and then the, and then on the Saturday at the Sony Center, it's the uh, Star Trek in concert. So okay. They're be playing music from, the, from Star Trek. From Star Trek, yes. Oh, okay. That's fitting given, you know, the passing of uh, Leonard Nimoy yes, recently. And, that. and there might even be a moment of silence for him yeah. on that day, too. There's also a minor league baseball team south of the border, the Buffalo Bisons. Ah, Buffalo. Buffalo Bisons. Love the Buffalo Bisons. They're the farm team for the Toronto Blue Jays. That's right, yes. They're having a special Star Wars night on Saturday, July the 18th at 6.05 p.m. Excellent. Tickets for the baseball games, they go on sale this Saturday. Alec, Alec can I ask a question? Are, okay. are you being paid by Star Wars or Star Trek for uh, this opportunity here? No. Are you being paid by the Bisons? No. Or the Toronto Marlies or, or any of these other sports teams? No, I just thought I'd like to share it with your viewers. Am I, are, Ricky, are we being paid by any of these I stuff? am. Okay, <laughs> as long as someone's getting paid. I hope, are, are, are viewers getting paid? With love. With love, okay. The, this Star Wars uh, night at the at the Buffalo Bisons, it's That's like right. a huge deal. Like how uh, how long have they been doing this? What's... They've been doing it since 2007, since the 30th yeah. anniversary. So thank you, Alan, for sharing that information with us. Thank you for Kevin and Rick for having me on this special episode of Unboxing Wednesdays. Hey, no problem, man. And and uh, you viewers out there who are in other parts of the world, would you like Alan to talk about any Star Wars, Star Trek, G.I. Joe, Huey Lewis, or Journey-related events in your area? <laughs> Email us and let us know, and we can get Alan to come on here and talk about it. All right. Thanks, Alan. Thank you. All right, so that is it, everyone, for this week. Thank you once again for watching. Please remember to check out Comic Boxer. Check out store.stadiumcomics.com. I know I talk about these things to death, but listen, man, we gotta make some money making this, and these it's videos. It's really worth it. I mean, <laughs> uh, Edge of Spider Verse Two at like a hundred bucks now. You're laughing. I'm telling you, man, we laughing. we're prognosticators over at Comic Boxer. <laughs> what is that? What is that? We mean? tell the future, oh, man. Is that what we that tell is? the future. Connect with us on any of the websites you see listed here on the screen. Check out our friend Louis' podcast, the Recap uh, Podcast, to get you all caught up what's going on in the world of comics. And we'll see you all next time for episode 229. Take care, everybody. Have a great week. Enjoy your comics this week. Yeah.